But if you, if you bear that in mind that often we don't want to know our addictions because we're so afraid of the darkness within. Right? Now God doesn't judge this darkness that's within. We are judging it, but God doesn't judge it. Like God still loves you unconditionally, even with this darkness within. Right? But we need, if we want to be closer to God and also closer to ourselves, we need to know what it is and release it from ourselves. And that's going to require some courage on our part. Does that make sense? Yeah. Peter, you'd like to... Is there microphones around? Just straight behind you, Graham. If you keep your hand up here, sir. Thanks. AJ, um, when you say uh, God loves us all unconditionally, mm -hmm. and then there's the, uh, the whole situation about us drawing... Uh, divine love into our souls. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about those two differences? Uh, they're not different. So let's firstly look at what's going on. Here's God, here's our soul, or here's us. God loves us, so this is me. God loves me unconditionally and totally desires for me to feel that love that God has for me all the time. So God has a strong longing 100% of the time to give you her love without conditions. So there's no conditions, you don't, can't earn it. It's a gift that she wants to give you. But what's happening inside of us emotionally is we are blocked to receiving it. And our blockages are under the control of our will. So for, to give you an example, if I feel really bad about myself, it's very hard for me to let somebody else love me without me crying. Does that make sense? Like, it's very hard. Like, if, if I feel really bad about myself, like I'm a disgusting person, and somebody comes along and says, oh, I really love you. You're a beautiful person. If I'm connected with my emotions, I will probably instantly just burst out crying. Actually, five minutes ago, that happened. Uh, I was outside. Somebody, came, somebody was sitting there, and they asked me to spend a bit of time with them, and then they felt bad about that. And I said, actually... I love you as my own daughter. Right? And she just burst out crying. And she's still outside crying, actually. Um, so why does that happen? Because we inside don't feel... We feel rejecting of that. We, we, can't, we can't contemplate that, that, lo that somebody loves us in that way. So, so what actually happens inside of us emotionally, and this is where the emotional work obviously is important, is it's like we've got a blockage blocking God's love that's always there ready to flow into us, but we've got all of these blockages of letting it flow into us. Can you see that? One of those blockages might, not, might be, I don't want to be open and vulnerable. So you, you, you try being in a love relationship with someone who's not vulnerable. Does it work very well? You know, you, you, say, you, you try to give them some love and they think that, you, they think that you're given it because you want something in return and you know there's all these different things that they think that your love is even though it's just a pure gift and what we're doing with God is the same thing we've basically got this haze of all of these emotional injuries that cause us to reject the flow of love into us so while God has all this love for us and it is unconditional we ourselves using our own will reject the flow of that love into ourselves. And because God honours our free will, he honours that we are rejecting his love. In other words, he, he doesn't force our soul to receive that love until we decide we wish to. And that's where our longing becomes a part of it. If I long for it, now my soul becomes open and vulnerable, now I'm ready to receive. The problem is with longing is a lot of our longing is distorted. And I've given that example quite frequently where you, know, you start out with a longing. So in other words, let's say, that there's a, let's say Mary's on the other... This happened to me when I first met Mary, right? It's exactly this happened to me. I was sitting in the room. Mary was over in the corner. I'm feeling there's my soulmate. Like, like for a start, it's not just there's my soulmate. It's like this girl I've been hanging out for, for 40 years and there she is. Like the first, very first time I met her, again for 40 years, I've got all these feelings. And la, 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 just, but, but I go, what do I do? What do I do? And my own unworthiness 
prevented me from just going straight up to her and saying, Mary, you're my soulmate. <laughs> and I've been waiting for you for 40 years. Like, my own unworthiness prevented that. So what did I do instead of that? I'm standing like, I don't know what to do. And, and she, she comes up, she, she wants to talk to me. I don't know what to say. But basically what's happening is my own feelings are interfering with the possible transaction. Now, Mary said to me since that she wished that the very first time I met her that I actually went up and said that to her, you know. But, but, and, and in one point in time she was quite upset with me that I didn't um, because I eventually finished up through a series of events I told some, somebody else found out, right, D due to my own feelings when I was home and there was visitors at home and so forth. And somebody else found out. Then somebody else found out. Then somebody else found out. And then that somebody else told Mary's parents. And then Mary's parents finished up telling Mary. Right? And all of that happened because I felt unworthy and I rejected it. I rejected it, not her. She didn't even know what was going on really So at that point. So this is what we have going on with God a lot. We are in this constant place of rejection of God's love flowing into us. And that's why we need to go through these other things. So that barrier diminishes as we pray and ask for divine love and as we clear our own emotional state. Yep, it's like sort of lessening it, lessening it even further, lessening it even further. And as soon as the last barrier goes... At that moment, you will be at one with God. Because the love from God, if you long for it, will constantly be flowing into your soul. So at that moment where there's no more barriers, you will actually be at that moment at one with yeah. God. From that moment on, God's love will be flowing into, into you like a constant stream of water being poured into your soul. And you'll never be without it. You'll never feel apart from God after that point. It'll just keep flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. Beautiful. Yeah. So it just requires a bit of work in between. <laughs> You're starting to laugh about the bit of work because you still don't believe that it's a bit of work, really. And can I just point out to you, before I answer more questions, that actually there's only seven spheres of development till at one moment with God. There are 14 spheres of development that we know of at this point after that. So what does that tell you? That at least only a third of your problems in your life are going to be, by, by the time you're at one with God, a third, of your, a third of the issue is going to be gone, but there's a lot more truth to learn, and after that it will all be joyful. So we're just going through this painful part because of the first seven spheres of crap that we've got to work out through the, through the human condition. And it feels hard because... If we're the first group of the first people, part of the group of the first people doing it, we have the resistance of the rest of the world to work against in the process. And that, that makes it quite difficult, along with our own addictions. Well, they, they, when we say our own addictions, we're talking about everyone's addictions in the universe, including the spirits that are around us. They just have addictions too, they're no different to us. <laughs> 